if you tuned into Twitter recently, you might have seen viral clips such as Jorginho breaks up with girlfriend in front of camera operators and other classics like James Tarkovsky attempts to flirt with a female before being mercilessly bullied by a man with no vocal cords. The new Amazon documentary Married to the Game follows the lives of footballers' wives and following them through the various trials and tribulations of being married to a footballer. So I thought, hey, you know what? Listen, it might be a decent idea to sit down and watch the entire series. But was that a mistake? Yes, yes it was. So, the concept. Take four Premier League stars and Matt Turner, interview their wives, be a bit of a fly on the wall, and turn the whole thing into a bit of a documentary. Now, obviously, the concept of footballers, wives and families, and the, the difficulties that there can be in being married to a, a professional baller has been touched upon a little bit in stuff like all or nothing with Arsenal, but no one's ever really sat down and decided, boom, this is what I'm gonna make. But does it really give you an insight into their lives properly? Well, we start off with Riyad Mahrez and his partner or wife, Taylor Ward, and straight off the bat, one thing becomes apparent. It's organized and stuff. This man needs a lozenge, bruv. Get him a suva at the utmost urgency. This brother's vocal cord is out of tune. It's crazy, I've never known anyone's throat need to be like oiled before. Pause. Him and Sean Dice would be a dynamic duo if we had ever ended up at Everton. He's the coach of Everton. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like we find out a little bit about her, her background, where she's from, her family and stuff. And this is where it becomes apparent that the show is going to feature and focus more on the wives themselves, really, than interviewing the players that often. Which is fine. Again, I don't need to interview Riyad Mahrez about what happens in his house, to be honest. I don't care. We find out that Taylor owns a jewellery company and runs it with her sister, and that she's never left or lived outside of Manchester. Something that's going to change pretty quickly. As, of course, Riyad moves over to Saudi Arabia with Al Ali. Now we'll come to their troubles and what happens with them later on, but at the same time, we're introduced to Ilka Gundogan's partner, Sarah. Now Sarah's very different. She used to be a model back in Milan. And to be honest, has a very like independent life and work ethic, which is cool. Obviously, I know there's a bit of a perception and misconception that once you settle down with a footballer, you don't have to do any more work for the rest of your life. But one thing to credit both Taylor and Sarah is they both at least have some, you know, actual business and work going on outside of just being a footballer's wife because I'll, I'll be honest going into this I was extremely concerned that I was just going to see a bunch of made in Chelsea characters complain about not being able to go to a Prada show every Tuesday one thing I was concerned about was Sarah Gundogan pronouncing her own surname I'm Sarah Gundogan and this is my husband Ilkay Gundogan brother if she can't get it right then how is anybody else supposed to get it right now of course as Riyad Mahrez is heading to Saudi Arabia to join Ali Ilkay Gundogan is making a move of his own to sign for Barcelona on a free transfer I'll be honest, the Amazon TV producers must have been pretty gutted seeing two of their main characters depart six days into filming. You know, let's, let's not take a piss here. I, I certainly was. Well, I think you are. Sarah's cool with it. You know, she moves all of his stuff. But I think one cool thing that it does highlight this sort of segment is that, you know, when a player moves club, it isn't just how we kind of perceive it when you sign a player on career mode and they just kind of spawn at your training camp. There is obviously a lot of stuff that needs sorting and there are a lot of things that you maybe take for granted as like a football fan. You know, the fact that they do ultimately just have to pick up and move everything. If a signing, for example, happens on deadline day, there's absolutely no warning. You've just got to pack up your shit, move from Manchester and then just find a gap in Saudi Arabia sometimes. Now, again, I'm not going at a woe is me angle because again, footballers get paid a lot of money and they get to live in big houses. So I'm sure it's not that difficult for them to find places, but it's just interesting. It's something that I guess we maybe overlook a little bit. Now, Jorginho and his partner, and I, I stress the word partner rather than wife. You'll see why in a second. Uh, her name is Kat Harding, and she used to be a singer-songwriter. They're very musical. Jorginho even plays the guitar. But I can't help but feel the rest of his Arsenal teammates won't be too happy with him when he breaks out the guitar singing Ed Sheeran after a 2-1 loss to Manchester City. Do you want me to rap anyone? Live for me a bit. No, we don't. <laughs> We learned that Jorginho and his partner, they met on an app and he couldn't actually speak any English. So he basically frauded his way through the entire talking stage by just using Google Translate, which I'm sure didn't go badly wrong at any point during proceedings. But the clip that went viral on Twitter again, as I mentioned earlier, was one of himself and Kat having like a bit of a, an argument where they were getting ready for a party that they were throwing. I think it was for Kat's birthday. She basically makes a joke about whether he's going to propose to her that evening. So she was going to keep her ring finger empty just in case to which Jorginho just basically says Naji gets vexed and then goes downstairs and slams the door you're not gonna propose to me today are you no just in case it's free <laughs> it's gonna say free 
Excuse me? It's gonna stay free. I wait for your downstairs. Jorginho leaving marriage, here we go. Yep, safe, cheers for that Fabrizio, mate. And you know what, I hear it, because her plan here was to sing for him on her own birthday. Who even does that? It's a nice gesture. Look, I think she even like sang in Portuguese. Um, you know, great gesture and all that, but in front, like basically they've got like both their families around and it's her birthday and then she's singing and playing the piano and that. It becomes a musical. It's all like a, just a bit too much. I just wouldn't be able to hack that personally. Fabio Vieira's sat in the corner, not really knowing what's going on. Declan Rice saw his opportunity to sneak in a little feature at the end. Rice, Rice, baby. Big. Meanwhile, yeah, you know, listen, it was it was a nice gesture, but for Jorginho, he's seen more misses than a Gabriel Jesus season compilation here. Now into the second episode, and we're introduced to the Tarkovskis. James, a northern lad who plied his trade at Burnley for a long time before moving over to Everton, a player that's had a little bit of a foray into the English national setup, and he's like regarded as a centre back, I think, that overperformed at a struggling team, but is now held down by well the shackles of being an Everton defender. It did kind of feel like him and Matt Turner came in as reserves at episode two because Mares and Gundogan just fucked off. James Tarkovsky's wife is a fitness trainer. She becomes like a PT during the course of the series. And I can't even lie, lads. They're actually just both really sound. James Tarkovsky's bare laid back, just doesn't really care about anything, very chilled out. She's actually pretty funny. I think these are the two that I like felt were the most relatable out of the rest. I spoke about at the start that I was concerned it was gonna be like a made in Chelsea, everyone's really highbrow, kind of snooty, very posh and like detached from reality. And at moments they do appear to be that, but I don't think these two ever really do. James Tarkovsky's wife, Samantha, actually talks about the pressures of body image when it comes to footballers' wives and how much of a role model she wants to be to younger women, which I think again is something that it is like a, a struggle in terms of society generally. And they probably are put under the microscope again as footballers wives they're they're, they're sort of expected to look a certain way because the, the way wags were perceived in the early 2000s and Jorginho's wife well <clears throat> not wife partner speaks about the same thing as I mentioned Matt Turner arrives at this point the American with his American wife uh, they weren't too pleased when they saw Nottingham for the first time Get me out of this shit -o. now I think Matt Turner yeah uh, he actually provides probably the most interesting storyline of this series. I'm gonna be honest with you, each couple does provide like a, a different thing, but they're not always the most interesting or relatable things. You know, for Riyad Mahrez and his partner, to be fair, it's them going off to Saudi Arabia and the struggles that come there. For Ilkay Gundogan and his partner, I don't really know, to be honest with you. The Tarkovskis are just sound. Jorginho and his partner are just mental. But then with Matt Turner, his partner is actually pregnant and is expecting at basically the same time as he goes away with the US men's national team for international duty. Which means basically if the baby is born like slightly prematurely, he misses the birth. Which, you know, I, I do resonate with, not that I've, no, not because I'm a dad, that doesn't make sense. Um, but it is obviously, you know, no amount of money can replace the memories, the core memories that you make either with a partner or with your child. You know, if you're constantly missing your own kids growing up because you're so busy playing football, you know, you having a million quid, yes, cool, it'll help them in the long run. It'll, you know, make them set for life and you give them a really cool quality of life. But at the same time, you kind of miss out on things that personally speaking would be important to you. And there are tough times for them as a family during this most notably trying to pronounce the word nottingham so is it nottingham or is it not him? You're not supposed to say ham. Meanwhile, in a similarly exotic place known as Saudi Arabia, Riyad Mahrez's wife, Taylor, is coming to terms with the fact that obviously Saudi Arabian culture is very different. There's no drinking allowed there. A lot of her friends won't be able to come and visit her just because it's so far away. And also, you know, different rights in terms of women. For example, if they were to stay at a hotel, she wouldn't be able to go and use the swimming pool because only men are allowed there, even if she wasn't to wear anything too revealing. And again, that is also like something quite interesting. I think with the rapid rise of Saudi Arabian football. I think that's why you've then also seen a rapid exodus for some of those players as well. The likes of Karim Benzema, the likes of Jordan Henderson, the likes of Roberto Firmino, who haven't necessarily left, but haven't found themselves as happy as they thought they were going to be by getting the big bag and heading over there. So that gave a little bit of an insight, you know, maybe being a little bit isolated, you know, especially for, for Taylor, Riyadh's wife, you know, she's never left Manchester. She's never lived anywhere else. So this is a, you know, massive culture shock. But to be fair, one she takes pretty well and she learns to respect the culture 
Poulter and shit, which is cool. Meanwhile, it's time for James Tarkovsky's first Premier League game of the season. And for some reason, the build up to this game is filmed like a dodgy drug deal. James Tarkovsky getting close to very different white lines, clearly. They lose, as Everton tends to do. And apparently when James loses a football match, he likes to play a lot of PlayStation, which I can't honestly imagine makes him feel any better. Shut up! Shut the fuck up in the background! You backstage game is scrub! And elsewhere for Matt Turner, he goes away on international duty, he thinks he's going to miss the birth, but does actually make it back in time to be able to be there for, you know, the birth of his second child, which is a very wholesome moment. And again, nice to see because I'm sure, again, as I said, there are plenty of footballers that have missed massive moments in their, you know, their partner's lives or in their kids' lives because they've had to go away for football, whether it be Champions League, just a, a normal domestic game, or of course, in Matt Turner's case, international duty. So all in all, there's quite a lot of storylines going on. We're getting to learn about these partners, um, but also like learn about the players. Quite cool and interesting to just see these players as as normal men. What do you mean normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> Ilkay Gundogan has basically no shower products whatsoever. He's just like all of us for real with his 11 in one shower gel that can wash your hair, condition it, clean your body, hack out the dishwasher and then act as diesel fuel if you really need it to. Riyad Mahrez simply does not give a shit. He was tasked with buying a house in Saudi Arabia upon the move and chose a house that quite literally had nothing in it apart from a swimming pool. That is something that I would do. Saying that his wife should stay in the kitchen Kitchen, however, I want her more in the kitchen and stuff. Not something that I would do. The man might as well have literally bought a plot of land at this point. Completely useless. But if you were expecting anything revolutionary outside of giving you like a bit of an insight into certain players' lives and then a few things that do make being a footballer's wife difficult, then you, you're gonna be sorely disappointed because whilst this show does genuinely give you a bit of insight, you know, especially into I think the I think the Riyad Mahrez storyline was probably one of the most interesting ones. Again, with the added dynamic of you know being a woman in Saudi Arabia, the actual dynamic of changing club and it being it being a very extreme transfer as well. And then the Matt Turner storyline again was probably something pretty interesting too because sometimes again, as I said, you kind of overlook the things that footballers do potentially miss in their lives when it comes to being dedicated as a football. But other than that, realistically, didn't offer like a crazy amount. It's like shit TV. You know when like your partner watches The Only Way is Essex and then you get forced to watch it for like two episodes and you realize that you never want to watch that sort of television again. It's on the road to that. I'm not, it's not as bad as that because again, it does give you some level of something. But unfortunately at times it does play into a little bit of a character trope of like rich people that are a little bit detached from reality and that maybe don't know real struggle that well or certainly have been removed from real struggle for a long period of time to the point where they don't fully remember it anymore. It's not that bad. There's not any people in the show, I don't think, that are like unbearably annoying or unbearably rich and don't have any understanding of what it's like to not be rich. And again, I thought the Tarkovskys were really sound. Like, there wasn't a single part in the show where I was like, oh, these guys are a bit snooty. They had that northern edge. They were actually really sound and really calm pretty much at all times. I remember watching the Paul Pogba documentary and doing a video for that. And I basically came to the conclusion that that was propaganda which it pretty much was. Don't think there's too much of that here. It does obviously paint the people involved in a good light and, and sh like shines a light on, you know, the good things that they do, whether it be for their work or for their communities. But it also like shines a light on difficult times and relationships as well. So I don't really have a problem. With, with that, to be honest with you, I think it's fine viewing. You know, if you, and I think it appeals probably to people that also don't care about football that much. Like I can imagine girls, women, just general dons as well that don't care about football that just maybe are interested in the high life. Also being able to watch it and not feel confused or whatever. I'd give it like a five out of 10. It's just like an average show to be honest with you. Like, it's just an average documentary. It's filmed kind of annoyingly, like the only way is Essex without really that much in the way of creativity and the storylines are all right. So yeah, average, I guess. If you've watched it, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And if there's any shows, football and movies, whatever you want me to watch either for the first time or review or whatever, then let me know that as well down in the comments section too. If you have enjoyed this video though, feel free to hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. And of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.